Okay guys, I'm just going to show you my workshop. Um, this is a standard 20 foot shipping container and when I sold my house I had a 35 square meter workshop and I needed to move it because I didn't want to get rid of all the machines that I had. It took me quite a long time to uh, accumulate them. So what I'll do is I'll open it up and I'll show you inside. Okay, so welcome to my workshop. Uh, we had a bit of a look from the outside, but uh, from the outside it can be quite deceiving because uh, on the inside there's quite a, a lot more room than what you might imagine. So what I'll do, I'll just go through some of the machines that I have first and um, then we'll have a bit of a look at some of the goodies as well that I have tucked away. So if I start on the left wall here, we can see I have the RPC. Now this rotary phase converter, I, I needed this because I only had a 16 amp single phase uh, supply to this workshop but it was 230 volts um, so I still need to mount these switches in the perspex uh, so I just need to drill some holes but I made this cabinet and I soundproofed it and on top of this cabinet I also have a fan that draws the hot air out so that this won't overheat and underneath I have a hole sword under there um, so I can get air um, drawn through to allow cooling I have a electrical um, fuse box here. This is the same kind of fuse box that you find in Norway in building sites. So I have this in the in the circuit as well, just to ensure that I don't over overrun the supply or burn out any of my wiring. All the wiring is tucked away inside this conduit that you see here. So it's all safely hidden and uh, quite neat and tidy. So the first machine I have, and I'll just get to a position where you can see it a little bit better is this Stenberg's KLE combination machine. So this machine is quite nice because uh, at the top here we have, oh if I can lift this up, let me see, ah there we go, at the top here we have a circular saw and it's very heavy duty like this machine is cast iron and it weighs about, I don't know, be 500 kilos I would say. Um, we have a uh, jointer thicknesser here, or a planer thicknesser. And for the sake of storage, I took off what's called uh, the long hole bore attachment for doing your, your tenons. Um, it also has a spindle molder at the back, which is kind of tucked away there. So this is a three horsepower machine. So it's quite a hefty machine. It's, it's very solid and very low vibration when it's running. Um, you'll see that it's on a pallet at the moment. That's because it, it'll be on a mounted base. It, it'll be mounted on a base with wheels so I can roll it outside. Now, I, I'm waiting because uh, I've injured my back, but you'll see that I have these H-beams here that are welded up into the corner of the container. So these H-beams that I have on either side, these are for a rolling bridge crane that I'm going to be installing. I just have to make the crane and get it installed. And I have another H-beam that's going to go between these H-beams and there's going to be wheels on either side of it and then I'm going to have a, um, I've already bought it, but I have a crane, an electric crane which is why, if you recall when I was showing you the conduit I have that power point up there, right there because that's where I'm going to be drawing the power from for the crane so yeah, this, this machine here is quite nifty um, and it allows me to do a lot of different woodworking functions in a relatively small package so then we'll move along to my metal uh, metal cutting bandsaw. So this is a two-speed unit. It's a, a Mac Special 215. It's an Italian-made bandsaw. Um, for those of you that don't know, the Italians have an entire district in Italy that just dedicated to building saws. This saw is very, very good in that um, when you move move um, uh, the setting to cut at 45 degrees, you don't move the material, you move the head. Okay, so I'll repeat that again. You move the head to cut 45 degrees. What that allows you to do is it allows you to have long stock um, in this saw and when you when you cut 45 degrees, rather than having to whip the stock around and, and clear a path for the stock to move when you're trying to turn at 45 degrees, you just turn the head instead. It's far more convenient. So if you're looking at buying a bandsaw, get one where the head, um, you can cut the angle by moving the head rather than moving the stock. So then we move along to my little uh, Colchester Chipmaster, little metric 
lathe that I have. Um, I drove to Stockholm to pick this up quite a few years ago. Um, it was owned by a, a tool maker from New and he'd ordered it special uh, from Colchester. This is kind of a one-off model from Colchester. It has a lot of upgrade internals but still some of these old handles. So uh, in doing the research this was a prototype that they made and the models match up with uh, uh, production year of 1965. So at that time there the metric examples of Colchester chipmaster were just unheard of. Um, so I'm going to go into this machine in a little bit more detail later but um, we'll just move along to my Decal FP1. So I have a Decal FP1 here as well which is a very sturdy solid little machine. Um, this machine here comes in about 750 kilograms and uh, the little chipmaster comes in at about 550 kilograms. But you'll notice that the capacity of these machines is very very similar and that was intentional. All my machines that I have uh, everything I own in this little workshop is designed to handle the same capacity job that is about 12 inches diameter by uh, 20 inches in length. So everything I have, uh, be it the bandsaw, be it the lathe, be it the mill, can handle that capacity work. So yeah, this is a lovely little German machine, very very nice, but I have a problem with the electrical contact which I have to change out, then I have to give the thing a bath. Um, I haven't used it yet, I sold my other milling machine I had and I bought this because it was a far sturdier machine, so it was a an upgrade for me. So in the corner we have these old Lister cabinets. Now these cabinets when I got them they were an absolute mess. They were thrown out at the SAS Airlines um, manu uh, not manufacturing but the maintenance department. So they were absolutely disgusting so I had to sand and putty the outside and, and repaint them but I haven't gotten around to doing the fronts yet. Um, but they're all, ball oh, they're all ball bearing so they roll very very smooth. Um, so they're, they're extremely high, high quality cabinets. So I have those cabinets on, on either side here. Now I also have a little, um, a little finger brake here. Now this finger brake is a, is a Danish made unit. I'll just let it focus in there. It's a little Danish made unit and it's, uh, it has a capacity of 650 millimeters by 1.25 millimeters thick in steel. Of course, thinner in stainless, but again, thicker in, in aluminium. I, I've bent up to 2.5 mil on this little unit. It's mounted on wheels because uh, to get to my cabinets, because it's such a tight space, I, I can roll this cabinet out and I can access what's inside it. But to get to the other cabinets, what I have to do, and I'll just do this now, is I have to roll it to the side to allow me access to the other cabinet that I have. So now that it's rolled to the side, I can now open this cabinet up. So these cabinets here are very good because they allow me to sort out all my goodies, like all my taps here, um, with all the dividers they have inside. And this is extremely valuable because when you have a lot of small parts, for example, um, lots of end mills and things like that that you want to keep organized, it's very useful to have it set up in this manner. So, because I have the electrical problems with the milling machine, my DRO is currently parked at the top of this cabinet there. When I got the milling machine, it came with an accessory cabinet, which is this cabinet here. It's a very, very good quality cabinet, but it was beaten up and bent up and everything. Um, I'm not going to open it at the moment because the shipping container isn't level. And every time I open it, it just uh, all the drawers slide out all over the place. But um, when I get it leveled, then I'll open it up and, and I'll show you guys the goodies I have inside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see. No, I can't zoom out anymore. I'll just get a little bit further back to give you a good view of this compressor. This compressor is quite interesting because it's a dental unit. It has a capacity of 85 litres. Um, it's a three-cylinder compressor and it's extremely quiet in operation. Uh, quite a low RPM motor. I think it's about 1400 RPM. It runs extremely quiet. What's interesting about this is that it has these vibration dampers. I'll see if I can point them out. These dampers here, um, and it stops the huge vibration that you get from the cylinders moving. So if I rock this, uh, you can see that the whole head, well, maybe it's a bit tough to see, but the whole head is very, very well dampened so that it's very quiet in operation and yet produces uh, a lot of air quite a high capacity compressor given its small size. So this is really useful in a workshop. Um, I might kick it off later on just so you can hear how it runs. Now I also have this cabinet here. I'll get to a bit better view so that you can see it. 
this cabinet here also came from SAS Airlines and something very interesting I have a friend that I work with and he was a machinist in SAS Airlines um, in the maintenance division and this was his old cabinet so when he saw this he was just like oh you're kidding me and I'm like what's that and he said that was my cabinet when I worked there he's like I made these labels um, this was mine at my machining uh, station and I went, oh you're kidding me so it's a small world but um, this cabinet here holds all my goodies, it holds all the different materials I have, so it's all nice and neat. I know exactly where to find them all. And it also allows me to have all my Morse taper drill bits in uh, in quite a neat order, so that I'm not constantly digging around trying to find them. Um, it's very heavy duty. J just these uh, pieces of steel that I have here, um, there's probably about 40 kilos just in steel, 50 kilos in steel here. Um, not to mention the compressor itself weighs about 85 kilograms. So when you have a look at how much steel and all the odds and ends I have in here, I, I would have in excess of 300, maybe 400 kilos just in and on this cabinet, and it handles it no problem. So moving along, um, let's have a look at the drill press. This here is quite a, quite a cool little drill press. This is an Arboga uh, drill press, and, and I'm sorry for the Swedes and Norwegians, I should say it's uh, for the Swedes, it's an uh, Arboga Pela board or for the Norwegians it's a sailor board um, so this is a really good uh, really good machine it has a, an extremely broad range of speeds so we have from 100 to 2775 so we can see we have these settings so we can change speeds with the gearbox but it also has a two speed motor so we can select from the two speeds with this switch here as well um, so that's what allows us to have this really broad range of speeds now when I got this here the electrical switch was busted up and the emergency safety didn't work at all so I had to repair all of that. It was missing a lot of handles and everything but I got it for a very good price. Now one of the interesting things when I bought it they thought that the pinion gear was damaged because when you would lower it it would catch but all it turned out to be is the slot that we have here used for knocking out the Morse taper tooling was uh, was um, raised around the ends from knocking the wedge in, so that was catching every time you'd lower the uh, lower the spindle and lift it up again. So all I did is I just stoned that down, and it's smooth as silk now. Works wonderfully. You probably also noticed my golf ball handles here. Um, I'm a bit tight. I don't want to spend money on things if I don't have to. So I bought two two golf balls for a buck. I drilled them and uh, tapped them, and then just threaded them straight on. So quite a cool little. Uh, little drill press here very sturdy very quiet and runs very well so we'll move on now to my workbench before I moved here I had an extremely large Lister workbench very high quality Swiss thing um, it was massive but it was just too big for my workshop I really loved that workbench but I couldn't fit it in so what I opted for instead was a tool trolley to use as a workbench so I have this Kamasa tools um, tool trolley and I took the handle off it and I upgraded the, the worktop with some waterproof plywood. Now this waterproof plywood was an offcut that I used for the flooring. So if you have a look here, the flooring that I have is the same wood. Now the reason for that is, and I'll just turn around, the reason for that is with these heavy machines like the lathe and the milling machine there, uh, when I want to transport this shipping container, the idea is I never have to buy a house or the garage again because I have my workshop in a container. So I will be sinking some fold-down loops, uh, some, some, um, some attachment points, so that I can have ratchet straps over the machines and they will attach to the loops that are already welded into the container. So I can ratchet strap all the machines down to the floor. So the 21mm thick waterproof ply gives me an additional 21 mil to the 18 mil of the original flooring for me to put coach screws in so that I can hold the machines in place in transit. Um, so that was that's the plan with the floor. So with the flooring you'll see I've screwed it in but after I pre-drilled it I'd flip the plates over and I had ground around where the holes were to grind away the waterproofing so when I used the building glue it had purchase on these plates so these plates aren't going to go anywhere they're not going to move. Of course, I have to get the lathe off a pallet as well um, later on down the track when I have the crane built. So this workbench is, is very, very handy, very sturdy, um, very strong. Of course, I have a, a bench vise as well, a little record, and I also have a record pipe, uh, pipe vise there as well. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the tooling I have. Um, 
I do all different kinds of odd jobs and prototyping and everything, so I have all different types of tooling. So these are just my hand tools here. Now, I didn't lash out and go nuts on hand tools. In fact, there's only a handful of these things here that I bought new. Um, these PB Swiss screwdrivers, one of those things I bought new. These screwdrivers here I bought when I was 18 years old with my first paycheck, and I still have them. Um, I bought them in a set with these red screwdrivers as well. But nearly everything else I have here was bought secondhand. Um, I really don't have... I really don't care about whether something is new or not. If it's good quality, then secondhand, it, it should still be good. Um, so, yeah. I also have this laptop, and the laptop is fixed to an arm here, so I can move this arm out of the way to access all the power points at the back there, and then swing the laptop back into place. Um, and it also allows me to store things underneath the laptop. That's pretty important. Like you don't realize how much space you waste until you have to start cramming things into a small workshop like this. Every every piece of uh, real estate is utilized. For example, under the drill press table, I have my rubbish bin. You know, Nothing is wasted. Another example is, if I show you underneath this cabinet, I have my hand drill, like my, bat, like my cordless drill, is tucked away under there. So everything is utilized. So you need to pre-plan where you're even going to put your power points because you need to have access to them because you have things tucked up against the walls everywhere. So here we have small parts storage. Now this thing here is a really, really clever solution, I think, to small workshops. Because rather than having these small trays cluttering up your walls everywhere, you just have everything stored in... And I'll move this out of the way so we can rotate it. You have everything stored in this parts bin and you can rotate it and you can get to all the different drawers that you have everywhere. Now this provides you with, an, with a, a certain level of storage that you just can't match. If I was to put these little trays on a wall, they would take up tons of room. But right now I have all of my little knickknacks and small bits and pieces tucked away in here and uh, there's plenty of room. Now I still haven't got this thing filled. I think I have like 350 or 400 small trays. I haven't even filled them up yet. So as I get small knickknacks and things, they, they just go away into this container. So for those who are keen-eyed, you probably saw my little Clarkson Mark II grinder. So this is my little tool and cutter grinder. This was in a just fantastic shape for a machine made in the late 60s, early 70s. So I told a gentleman in Sweden who had advertised that I'd come and take it, and thankfully he held it for me. And this is something that's really interesting in Norway and Sweden. Uh, for the most part, people still honour a gentleman's agreement. If you say you will take it, then a verbal contract is binding in court in Norway. It's still binding. You don't have to have anything written. So when someone advertises something on, on our equivalent of like um, Gumtree or uh, Craigslist and you say you will take it, then that's pretty much binding and most people honour that. So this gentleman that sold this Clarkson, he held on to this for me for a week and a half even though people tried to outbid it from under me. Um, because I got it for a very, very good price. So moving along, we'll have a look at this bandsaw. So I have this um, Centauro Compact Bandsaw. So this is a 2.5 kilowatt unit. It doesn't look very big on video, but it's a really beasty unit. I've used this for cutting up aluminium plates and sheets um, and cutting oak. Now the startup current required for this, the inrush current, is huge and also because when you see the thickness of the bandsaw blade, it requires a huge amount of power to get this thing turning. Now this shorts out my, my um, rotary phase converter, so what I have is I have a Yanmar diesel generator that's 5.5 kVA. And when I need to use these bigger tools, I just start that up and plug them in. Um, and that allows me to run the bigger uh, machines without, uh, without shorting out the power. So we'll go on to the construction of the, of the shipping container now and how I insulated this for the Norwegian winters and the cold weather. Um, I have these horizontal blue pieces of wood. These are glued against the, the surface of the container itself. And then I also have, uh, I have vertical studs that run uh, inside the corrugations. They are also glued into place. Now, what I have between these blue horizontal pieces there and there, I have sheets of styrofoam insulation and then on top of that I've put this pre-painted pre plywood and screwed that to the vertical studs. Now what that does is that allows me two points that I can fasten things to the wall. One I can fasten it on the horizontal piece or I can fasten it on the vertical piece or I can fasten through both 
I can put it through the horizontal and vertical. What that means is that by doing it that way, I can mount very heavy objects like this rotary phase converter, which weighs about 60 kilos, up onto the wall because the shear strength is extremely high of this glue, and there the load is spread over the horizontal um, bearer and also the vertical um, wall stud. So that has allowed me to mount very, very heavy objects. Now you probably also noticed, and I'll put this away, you probably also noticed the fire extinguisher and the first aid box. Um, you should always have that kind of thing in a workshop. Now I also have a couple other little things that um, I have in my workshop that I think are, are worth mentioning. Now some of you may have noticed as I walk past that these tool boards are sitting away from the wall. Now there's a reason for that and that is because if I move back in position here, I want to be able to have space behind the tool board so that I can have extra equipment there. So what I've used, I've used plasma screen mounting brackets to mount these tool boards so that I can pull them closer to me when I'm working with the lathe. And that allows me access to the tools both for the lathe and the milling machine and also allows me storage behind these tool boards. Now in a space this small, when you're working, for example, if I'm standing at the lathe and I'm working here and I look up, what I don't want to have is I don't want to have big cabinets sitting right in my face. It makes it very claustrophobic and it also limits the amount of light that I get from the fluoros above me. So what I need to do is to find small cabinets that I could mount to give me a little bit of extra storage. So these cabinets that I have here, uh, I bought these from Ikea. These are powder coated steel and they're very low profile and they fit just perfectly uh, above the tool boards there. And they're not in the way, they're, they don't... Um, contribute to like a claustrophobic feeling in the workshop. So it allows me to have quite a compact workshop. Okay, so what I might do, I might just fire up the rotary phase converter and um, we'll have a look at this little chipmaster lathe as well and I'll just, uh, I'll show it off. So here we have the chipmaster. Um, I have the rotary phase converter running so I'll give you an idea of this little lathe and uh, kind of some of its features and functions. So with this here, it's uh, it's a variable speed lathe, so I'll just kick it off. And I have a clutch here, so I can fire it up with the clutch. And one of the interesting things about the Chipmaster is it has a variator, and the variator allows me to change speed on the fly. So what I'll do, I'll just adjust the camera to give you a bit better picture of that. So we have the variator here at the bottom, so I can just crank it up and I can increase the speed on the lathe or I can turn it down on the fly at the same time. So of course I have automatic feeds in, in the two axes, so here you can see the hand wheel moving that way and then I can pull the plunger out and you can see this hand wheel moving here. So it's a quite nice little lathe. Um, oh. It has gear and belt drive as well. It has gear and belt drive, so for cuts where I have to have a lot of torque, um, I can change it to gear drive. So you can hear that the RPC is going in the background. Uh, it's not too bad, it doesn't make a whole lot of noise. I did have a problem with the bearing just before I fired the lathe up where it was making a bit of noise. So I think at some point I'm going to have to change the bearings out in the RPC. It, it just seems to be making an awful racket. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the lathe at least. So what I'll do now is I'll fire up the compressor so that you can hear how much noise a dental compressor makes in a little workshop like this. So I'll just keep this compressor off and just have a listen how quiet it is compared to a regular compressor. So you can hear with it running, I can still have a conversation and it's not making too much of a racket. So it's a, a quite nice compressor for such a small workshop. And it doesn't take very long for it to be fully charged. So we're pretty much starting from scratch, charging up that reservoir, which is an 85 litre reservoir, and it'll do it in a couple of minutes max. So 
So yeah, that's my workshop. 13.5 square meters, uh, very compact, but I have pretty much everything I need to do my uh, do my hobbies and, and fix machines and also be a bit of a resource to the neighbors. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask. And um, yeah, if, if you're looking at doing the same thing, building a shipping container workshop, let me know and I can give you some pointers in order to avoid making some mistakes that I made and uh, some ways that you can you can save some time in, in building your workshop. Thanks for watching.